Uh, today, we're going to be talking about global HR uh, transformation. And uh, as I said, you know, earlier on, um, it's the whole concept of a, an HR transformation is actually quite a daunting task, or it can be quite a daunting task. And yet, time and time again, wherever I am, I hear people drop that that term HR transformation into the conversation, into people's job titles as if it's a real thing. It's a thing that we should apparently all know about and all be able to do, but that's not often the case. So I'd like to share with you today just seven insights or seven tips uh, of the things that, you know, what I see as leading practice amongst teams that are going through or on that journey of HR transformation. Um, and the first of the seven points, so the first thing to consider is what makes a successful HR transformation? And before you embark on the journey, uh, and we find people, once they start to really think about what makes a successful project, the whole project can then start to fall in place. So simply having the technology delivered, having it delivered under budget and on time and working, which is of course what we're concerned about, doesn't necessarily make the project a successful project. So. You know, you may have heard things like um, ROI. I'm sure your vendors will have told you, oh, you know, ROI will be, it'll pay for itself in three years' time. That might be one measure of success, but there are, of course, many others. So things like engagement, uh, adoption, retention of employees are all th measures of success that you need to really think about when you're embarking on the project. So that's, that's tip number one, define what success looks like. So having defined what your success might look like, point number two I would like to offer is how do you measure that, that success? So at this point, um, I always use that age old adage, what gets uh, measured gets managed. So if you can measure it and you can start to put some metrics around the success criteria, then you're gonna have a much better outcome and more obviously something that you can compare with. So for example, if engagement is a measure, do you have an engagement score currently in the organization? Is it worthwhile perhaps engaging the workforce with an, employment, uh, with an engagement survey so that you've got some statistics or some before picture to, to compare with the after picture? And it occurred to me the other day reading an in-flight magazine about personal trainers. There was this fantastic picture of a guy looking at Brad Pitt after 15 weeks of personal training. And the picture beforehand was somebody who looked a little bit like me with his shirt off. But it was a great illustration of before and after. So I think you need your measures of success to be a before and after look. Um, and choosing an, in, an individual to lead that HR transformation is a bit like choosing your personal trainer. You need somebody who's gonna come around your house every morning, knock on the door, get you up, make you do the work, more importantly motivate you, keep you motivated you, but make sure that you're on track to achieve the things that, that you need to do. And building on that, of course, who do you need to support this, this great personal trainer that you've got? So choosing the right team is, I would say, tip uh, you know, point number three. Be very careful about who you select. Now, if you've chosen your success criteria, on the whole, they will determine the kinds of people that you're going to invite to this team. The, the, the success criteria, you want those people to really live that. They want to come from all parts of the business who understand and use those measures as part of their daily routine. But also at the same time, right at the offset, we've seen that you know, groups who really go through this journey are not afraid to change the teams up to mix and match people up because your skills and competencies required at the beginning of a project are going to be much different to those required at the mid and at the end. And also, we've heard it said many times again, you know, as people come scuttling into a meeting with their, their project notes, is, you know, I've got a day job to do as well. A lot of people are still operating the business as normal and doing the project at the same time. So standing down people, key players, resting them, bringing them back at appropriate times is a, is a good way to manage that, that team of individuals. Number four, I would say, if I do my fingers, is um, setting clear objectives. Now, I know that that's, you know, it's a throwaway comment um, and quite glib and an obvious comment, but often projects progress, the focus changes, and you end up fixing processes that until the project started, until you embarked on the transformation journey, 
those processes have never been scrutinised or looked at and suddenly here they are under the lens of a transformation project. It's quite easy to get derailed into redesigning a whole process and pushing the project scope and the timelines out. But at the same time, trying to be mindful that the technology is going to bring benefits and enhancements to some of those processes that, that you know, lend themselves to automation and workflow, etc., like that. So don't be distracted by that, but at the same time, be mindful of it. Number five, again, a bit of a glib comment, communication plans. So often you'll hear people say, oh, you know, it was a failure to communicate effectively. That might be the case. Now, nobody embarks on these projects without an intention to clearly communicate. Um, but often, you know, it's worthwhile getting a professional involved, somebody who can define a communication strategy, make sure that you stick to some of those communication events and celebrate those events. People are far more motivated within the team to to hit those communication events because it gives an opportunity to display a bit of capability, to give them kudos and to spread the word widely around the business. Penultimately, I'd like to talk about number six, which is driving a drop and Drive it and drive it hard and drive it early. Um, if it's not a, a success criteria, there's no doubt that it will be used to measure success of a project. So adoption, making sure that people really live, walk and talk the, uh, the functionality that you'll bring in and you know we all come to work from our home lives of being able to you know book a holiday online configure and buy a car manage your financial well-being all with a, a handheld device with software in the cloud but you come to work and that's often a different component so make sure that people are using those engaging portals to drive engagement and then finally review the people and the process and the technology they're not exclusive set a regular cadence, make sure that people revisit those guidelines all the time, remembering that there's going to be no surprises and no misguidance at the end of it. And I, you know, listening to what the speaker said this morning, we are in a, a to use that American military term, a VUCA world, you know, very volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous kind of time within business. So two things spring to mind, Brexit and Donald Trump. Thank you for listening and uh, come and see us on the info stand.